How are you today? Um, okay. Yeah, everything's all right. Perfect. My name is Tony Gonzalez. I'm from Made in Metal. Mm. And uh, we are here because you recently are going to release your new CD. Your first CD was 18 years ago and now is the second solo CD. Why did you decide to release a second solo CD after 18 years? Um, I always, I'm, I'm quite proud of the first solo album and I, uh, it didn't sell billions of copies, which I really don't care about, but the people that love it, really love it. And I always thought it'd be interesting to make another one, but my first loyalty has to be uh, to the band, especially at the moment because the last 10 years, we've been on a bit of a roll as a band. We've got a very good sense of momentum, where we're going, why we're going there. Um, so I know that if I do a solo project, it'll turn, you know, I'll say it will be three months, but it'll turn into a year. And I couldn't really say that to the rest of my band. And then the lockdown happened and I found myself on the sofa with a guitar and no prospect of playing any concerts or doing much with the band. And so it just happened very quickly. I wrote 17 songs in six weeks and um, it was just very fast. And, and, then, and then through last year, you know, it, they were singing, you know, it's a singer songwriter album. It's, it's me and a guitar basically, and lots of stories and, and, and ideas and, and sort of, you know, the, it's a landscape of the imagination. But quite quickly, I was kind of bored of me and a guitar. So I wanted other people to play on it. So I sent it to friends of mine, um, dotted around different parts of Europe, uh, you know, double bass player, um, three different composer, string composers. Um, uh, Kerry, our, uh, our bass player in the Model Army, his brother is the harp player in Florence and the Machine. So, um, you know, he's a friend as well, so he played on it. And so I had all these musical contributions coming back from other people. And then finally in November, uh, I got in to see Lee Smith, who mixed the last three New Model Army albums. And we kind of put it together from what we had. Yes, something good. So now that I see that you have uh, bongos there in the corner, I was uh, asking you, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm actually, I'm actually in the New Model Army studio at the moment because I'm so, starting working on a New Model Army record. Perfect. Bit. My question was, how did you record the song? But now I see that you recorded in your own studio. No, no, no. no? Recorded all, all the guitar and vocal by me, almost all, was done at home in my flat. Just with a, just one microphone, me and me in my flat recording. Or occasionally um, I was in my partner's flat in Paris, a little bit there too. Um, and then I think I redid a couple of the vocals when we were mixing. but. Generally speaking, it was all done at home. And I think all the people I sent it to, they all have little home studios or bedrooms, or, and that's where it was done by everybody. Something that I like it a lot is that uh, your voice sounds very deep in the recording. Yeah, there was a particular microphone that Lee wanted me to use. So for most of it, I, I used that microphone. But because also, if you're singing quite gentle, then you... A guitar actually sounds better, or it rings more, it sounds richer if you don't hit it too hard. You know, it's the same with the voice. There are some strings arrangements, but the strings arrangements are not allowed in the mix. It's surrounded. The, the, it's the, 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 the thing that's really loud in the mix is my voice. I think that's okay. It is a singer-songwriter album with a kind of backdrop of, of atmosphere and landscape from other instruments. But it's really me telling stories. The band continues, no? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm now, you know, I finished this album. I haven't listened to it for four months now. Uh, I've kind of forgotten about it, the surrounded album. Even though it hasn't come out yet, I've forgotten about it. And now I'm already, um, I got together with, with the band uh, for the first time in months, about two weeks ago, and we've been pooling ideas. So I'm, I'm working on that now. Yes, so I remember that Navigating the Stars was recorded because of the 9-11. And now I didn't expect that you recorded this because it's the lockdown. 
it's not quite true that, that, that Navigating the Stars was uh, uh, done because of that. I was going to do a solo album. The first day I got in the studio to start recording stuff, 9-11 uh, happened. And it was the backdrop to everything that was happening. But in a way, it was like, uh, I remember at the time, it was like the whole world was screaming. And what I wanted to do was not scream and make a record which was about something else. The, uh, the infinity of the ocean, you know, it, it's that album. This time, it wasn't so much, uh, you know, it's the, the, there's one song which has got a little bit about the pandemic in it, but mostly it's not an album about the pandemic. It's the same thing. It's, it's I'm stuck here in a flat. I want to escape into a, in a landscape, into a landscape of the imagination. That's where I want to go, because otherwise I'm stuck here. Yeah. So, you know, uh, that's what I wanted to create. Is, is, is a sort of landscape of the imagination. Close your eyes, you go into different places. It's like you're watching little movies. Yeah. That's kind of what I like, you know, my idea of what music is for, especially this kind of music, which is kind of storytelling and contemplative. Yes, Justin. You take your time when you want to record a solo CD, but this that you tell me is, to me, good news, but that means that we don't need another big disaster to have the third solo CD. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 it's, like I say, it's to do with time and to do with my loyalty to the rest of the band. <laughs> you know, yes. I'm not going to go off and have a, a solo career which is gets in the way of New Model Army. I'm not. You know, I owe it to the other guys. There will be a pack with navigating the star and surrounded all together. It, it, it's just that room. Really. Navigating by the Stars hasn't been changed, but actually Navigating by the Stars has been very difficult to buy in recent years. So we, we kept it. We added two songs uh, that were from that time. Um, one was the B-side. The other one I recorded just after I finished Navigating by the Stars and it belongs on that album. And it's it's just sat there for six, you know, 17 years not doing anything. So I put it on this Redux version of Navigating. But it hasn't really changed. The thing about navigating is, like I say, it was really difficult to buy anywhere, and it's never been on vinyl. So it made sense to bring it out all together as a package, you know, uh, with a new one and, and navigating, and, and, and then it'll be done, and then I'll go back to New Along. So uh, I would like to talk a little about some songs that there are in the CD. Uh, for example, uh, I didn't expect that Amundsen will be the first single. Why did you select it as the first single? It wasn't only me that selected it, but I I quite liked it as the first single because I think it's very definite and it's got a sound, you know, with the double bass and the strings and stuff, which is which come and go on the album. You know, and it's a story. It's an interesting story about a person. And I just thought that was the right way to lead off. You know, here here we're going. We've got an album which is going it hasn't got drums, but it has got instrumentation. Uh, double bass and, and, and so on. And you're going to have a very loud vocal telling you stories. But uh, maybe some people understood that uh, you selected this because uh, you have a sense of ecological, or you are uh, related with the problem of the earth. Well, everybody, isn't everybody? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, it's a story of Amundsen. I, you know, he's an Antarct well, Arctic explorer, uh, a very interesting character. And I like the song because it's got that kind of, I think he was quite spiky. You know, he would go off to, to the Arctic or the Antarctic, come back, be welcomed as a hero. But he didn't really, he couldn't really do normal life. He just wanted to go again, uh, which is something I very much understand because I'm, a, you know, that in that instinct to always just want to go. And he was always just desperately trying to raise money for the next expedition. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he was very popular. And he was quite, a, like I said, a prickly character. And I, I hope that's come a kind of across in the music. There are two songs in the CDs that I pay attention trying to discover what is the meaning behind 28 May and 1975. Um, these are both autobiographical. Yes. Um, I don't. I don't usually do. Um, when I was a kid, 
Uh, I left home when I was 18. I went to work in London on the underground, collecting tickets and sweeping platforms and, you know, just general job. And, uh, and I saved a bit of money and I went to America and I spent months on the road in America on my own, just having weird, hitchhiking. And I hitchhiked 30,000 miles and I had lots of weird adventures, of course, like you do when you're doing that. Um, but it was a very interesting and strange time to be in America because it was just after the end of Vietnam and after perhaps, you know, the civil rights movement had gone kind of wrong and the hippie movement had died and, the, and, and all the political assassinations of the, the late 60s and so on. And America was just going, <sighs> exhaustion. It was like emotional exhaustion. And if you listen to all the music of that time coming from America and the movies of that time, they're all kind of bleached out and sepia. You know, they're, they're, they're spent like a, and it left a very strong impression on me and it's taken me, you know, 40 something years to sit down and write, write it. So that 1975 is very written about that, my, you know, that, that time. Um, then after I got back, I went straight to Belfast and I lived in Belfast for a year in the mid seventies at the height of the troubles. And uh, a couple of years ago, New Model Army, we had, a, we had a show in Belfast and I had a chance to stay afterwards and um, uh, look around where I used to live and places I used to work and, and, and just remember things. And also look at Belfast, how it's changed, think about you know, the troubles, the things that are still happening there. And I ended up writing lots and lots and lots of stuff. And then when I was sat on my sofa at home, um, I remembered, you know, well, I, I started going through my notebooks and I found all this stuff about Belfast. So the 28th of May is a song about Belfast and it's at, particularly at that time, the 28th of May incident itself relates to something, but I don't really have to say what. Okay. But if you go back through your history books, you might find it, but you know, I'm not going, I don't need to say. Okay. You, you made me do my job. I'm going to find on the history books to see what happened. That it was just this morning, I was remember something that happened in my life more than 30 years ago, that it was a very bad situation when I was involved. And then I start remember and I say, I have never tell to anybody what did I feel this uh, day? So, is there in your CD a song with something that you are telling now that you never say before and is autobiographical? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, you know, I, uh, probably. I can't remember everything that's on it. <laughs> yes. I mean, there is more autobiography than usual. You know, there's a couple of love songs. There's songs about people I know, like Stone and Heather and Akistan and uh, Clean Horizon and those songs. There's the the, the very last verse of the album um, uh, on, on the song Surrounded um, is about my grandfather, who I never knew, who was, he was Canadian. Uh, and he was in love with Canada and all the big snowy wastes of cold, bleak, big landscape of, of Canada. He loved it. And even though, it, uh, sadly, he died before I was born, but even despite that, you know, his, I, his, he used to write a lot and his stories filled my imagination as I, when I was a child. And maybe that's why I've always been attracted to that kind of big snowy waste, even though I was born in England. Um, and so that, you know, the last verse is very, very personal to me. It was interesting that you changed the tone of your voice. For example, songs like Sao Paulo and Clear Skies sound very different than the others because you try to make it in a lower voice. So do you like to do it from time to time? Not so much Clear Skies. Yeah, I've done that with, I, I have got a very low voice, but the problem is singing in a very, very low voice. It's quite difficult to hear when you're playing, especially in a band. So you can't hear yourself, so you, so you, so you always pitch it badly. 
There's a there's a song that I'm very very proud of on New Model Army album eight called Someone Like Jesus, and it's sung very 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 low like that, uh, and I have done it before. Um, uh, you know I can go very low, but with Sao Paulo, what happened was that I I wrote something which was a bit of a it was quite up tempo and quite Brazilian in a in a kind of slightly pastiche way. Mm. Uh, and it was, you know, I, I wrote memories of, you know, of times in Sao Paulo, really. It's just a picture of Sao Paulo at three o'clock in the morning. It, you know, it's a, it's a, it, and, and when I went to Lee and I played him the song, he said, it, the music sounds like a pastiche. It sounds like you're trying to do something Brazilian. And I went, yeah, I, I see your point. He said, don't do it like that. He said, do it like a movie soundtrack. So you narrate it as if you're the narrator to, telling a story and do it, you know, with your low voice. So that's how I did it. That was actually his idea, but I think it works okay. When I finish the CD, I thought that the CD is mostly sad, even when there are songs like See Again. And why is the sadness? Because of the situation or because you are thinking in the past? You're gonna ask me philosophical you know, philosophical points of life. Oh. Life can be pretty sad. Yeah. But to be honest, if you look through the New Model Army music, you know, 40 years of it, there's a lot of melancholic elements. It's because I like music like that. That's, that's what I like. It doesn't make me especially sad, you know, an unhappy person, but I'm very attracted to music in the minor key. I mean, you're Spanish. You know, all Spanish, Spanish music is not happy, happy. No. I mean, there is some of it, but most of it is not. That's because life is not happy, happy. You know, this, this American idea that you should be happy. And if you're not happy, something's wrong. You should take a, you should take a pill or something or, or, or get, you know, make more money or, or, you know, it's nonsense. Life is not being happy. The moments of happiness come. Yeah. It's like goals in football. They don't happen all the time. So you, so when they happen, they're great. Yes. And I think that's most people's lives. So you have these shafts of sunlight that come through every now and again when you're happy. It can't happen all the bloody time. You know, it's a little bit like if you're super rich and you stay in a five-star hotel all the time, then then the five-star hotel just becomes boring and ordinary. It, it's it, the idea, I, I, I like being in New Model Army because sometimes we're kind of, you know, sometimes we have to sleep on the floor or, or sleep in a van or something, you know, and sometimes we have five-star hotels, so we have both, which means that when we have the five-star hotels, we go, whoa, look at this, you know, and you enjoy it. Uh, you know, life is like that, isn't it? Yes. You know, and, and life involves a lot of loss, necessarily. Um, and you know, I'm 65, so. Uh, but I don't think it's that. I, I think I've actually I've always been attracted to music with a element of melancholy. I am not happy 24/7, but sometimes when I'm sad, a good music made me feel better. Yeah, the, a that's really true. Um, secondly, sometimes depending on your kind of sadness, it's quite nice being, you know, you're happy being sad, if you see what I mean, listening to something melancholy or, or but I do remember this thing about um, music. Um, I have one very, very strong memory about the, the power and the magic of music. And I went to, um, we were, in, we were on tour in Cleveland, Ohio, mm -hmm. uh, in America, which, and it was a really hot, uh, sultry day, and we were in a really bad part of town. Um, and me and Ed went for a walk, and we, went, and we ended up in a little soul food cafe. Um, you know, uh, a few people in there. Uh, it was all a completely sort of black area of the city. And um, so we sat down and we, and, and we got a coffee, and it was the most depressed place I've ever been in my life. There was a couple of people behind the counter working, but they weren't really working and they looked really pissed off. There was a couple sat at the table that weren't looking at each other or talking. They were just looking away from each other. 
And there was another guy over at another table who was just like, head down, nothing. The most depressing atmosphere I've ever walked into. And somebody, I don't know, I can't remember if it was one of us or somebody else, got up and they went to the jukebox and they put on Otis Redding, You Can't Turn Me Loose. And, uh, and suddenly, in three minutes, something amazing happened in the cafe. The people behind who were working started moving a little bit while they were working. And they kind of just, the whole uh, aura brightened up. The couple that weren't talking, looking at each other started, first of all, they were tapping their feet. And then they looked at each other and then they smiled and then they started talking. And the other guy looked up and started tapping his feet. And it was like watching a flower open. Do you know what I mean? Yes. In, in fast motion. That, that's magic. Music is magic. Are you thinking to go on a little tour to introduce your CD or not? Yes. Um, probably through the rest of this year, it will be difficult to do gig gigs. So, but it might be possible to, you know, socially distance, sit down, yeah. which is kind of okay for me and a guitar. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, as soon as as soon as it's over, uh, and Nimorlami can play again, then I'm back with Nimorlami. Yes. So, Justin, this is basically the interview. So, if you want to say goodbye in any way to the Spanish fans or whatever, this is your moment. Ah, uh, well, uh, goodbye for now to Spanish fans. We'll be back. Um, whether I come back with an acoustic guitar, um, uh, I don't know. But with the band, we'll be back. Yeah. It was really nice to meet you. I hope to see you in person one day. Yeah, yeah. come along and say hi. <laughs> yes. Bye-bye, Justin. Bye. Bye.